Hello students, in this session we can discuss about the measurement of radioactivity. So in a decay process, the main interest is in the number of disintegrations per second and it is called activity or rate of decay. That is, it is the number of disintegrations per second or the rate at which the nuclei of its constituent atoms decay. So all of you know the radioactive disintegration law n is equal to n0 e raised to minus lambda t. n is the number of atoms present in the sample at time t. So how can you, we write activity or rate of decay? Rate of decay r is equal to modulus of what is it? The rate at which nuclei of its constituent atoms decay or the number of disintegrations per second. That is we can write it as dn by dt. That is n number of atoms are present at time t. That is d by dt of what is n? n is n0 e raised to minus lambda t. So, R will be differentiating we get N0 e raised to minus lambda t into minus lambda. So, in R we are taking only the modulus that is it is the modulus of dn by dt. So, this can be written as Minus sign can be avoided and we can return this as lambda n0 e raised to minus lambda t. And what is n0 e raised to minus lambda t? It is n. So, r can be written as lambda n. So, initially that is when t is equal to 0, what will be r? R will be lambda n0 e raised to minus lambda into 0. e raised to 0 is 1. So, R will be lambda n0. Since this is the decay of initial, we can represent it as R0. So, substituting lambda n0 we can now write it as r0 that is the initial rate of decay that is r is equal to instead of lambda n0 we can write it as r0 e raised to minus lambda t this is called activity law so this activity law r is equal to r0 e raised to minus lambda t where r is the decay at time t and r0 is the initial decay that is at time t0. So we know uh, the number of atoms in a radioactive sample it decreases exponentially with the time. Likewise activity of the radioactive sample it is also decreasing exponentially with time. So if you are plotting a graph between activity and time how will it look it, de it is decreasing exponentially with time and suppose at time t0 this is initial time initial time activity is r0 and at the half life period activity will be r0 by 2 so the activity of a radioactive sample decreases with time in the same manner as the number of atoms in a radioactive sample decreases because activity of a radioactive sample is the rate of disintegration or the number of disintegrations per second. Next we shall consider the different units for radioactivity or rate of decay. The SA unit of radioactivity is Becquerel denoted as BQ 
and one big curl is one disintegration per second. So the SI unit is one big curl and it is one disintegration per second. So problems in this section you have to uh, convert all quantities in SI units that is SI unit for time will be seconds and half life mean life etc you have to be converted it in seconds and another unit of radioactivity is Curie represented as Ci and one Curie is defined as 3.7 into 10 raised to 10 disintegrations per second this is actually the number of disintegrations per second per gram of radium and uh, it is the one Curie, we can define it as the quantity of a radioactive substance which give 3.7 into 10 raised to 10 disintegrations per second. And this Curie, we, if we represent it as milli Curie, it will be, you have to multiply this term with 10 raised to minus 3, that is 3.7 into 10 raised to 10 into 10 raised to minus 3, that will be 10 raised to minus 7. And if it is a micro curie, you have to multiply it by 10 raised to minus 6. So that will be 3.7 into 10 raised to minus 4. And another unit of radioactivity is Rutherford, represented as Rd. And this is 10 raised to 6 disintegrations per second. So, the SI unit will be Becquerel and it is 1 disintegration per second. Next, uh, consider for a radioactive substance if we need 1 Curie of radioactivity. That is, if we need 1 Curie of radioactivity for a radioactive substance. On what all factors this activity depends? dn by dt or r is equal to lambda n. So, the activity is directly proportional to the decay constant and it will be directly proportional to n n is the number of atoms in the sample so in since it is directly proportional to n it will be also directly proportional to mass of the sample so this is directly proportional to decay constant so this will be inversely proportional to t half also so if you if you require one curie of a radioactive substance activity and if the sample is having short half-life, if the sample is having short half-life, so short half-life, so there n should be large or the mass should be large. So substance with short half-life, it requires a large quantity of mass to cause one curie of radioactivity. And if a radioactive substance, if it is having large half-life, large half-life or short decay constant. So large half-life and short decay constant. So the decay constant is small and should be large. So substance with large T half, if T half is large, mass of the radioactive substance also should be large for one curie of radioactivity decay and for substance with short half life that is if t half is small then decay constant will be large and n also should be n should be small so if t half is small t half small means lambda is large and n should be small so t half and n or mass going proportional so the conclusion is substance with short half life period require a very small quantity for a one curie of radioactive decay and substance with large half-life period require a large quantity of mass to cause one curie of radioactive decay. Okay, thanks to everyone.